What up, crew? Welcome to the first ever show of At The Card Table. I'm your host, Vineet, aka Card Mechanic. And in this show, we'll be interviewing magicians and YouTubers right here on this channel. For the first ever interview, I'm gonna be interviewing a good YouTuber friend of mine who I've actually known for a few years now. He has a great channel, great content. So give it up for my man, Disky. Hey, Disky, how are you doing? Doing pretty good, man. Pretty excited about this. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very excited to have you as the first guest ever on this interview series, this show, so I'm, I'm pretty hyped. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Um, now, a lot of my audience probably already knows you, so I think this would be a good way to have other people get to know you as well, and of course, see us together for the first time, so. Finally. Really looking forward to this. About time, um, yeah. So uh, why don't you tell me a little bit uh, about yourself to uh, start off? I guess, uh, sure. what? Uh, what got you into magic? Why start off a uh, YouTube channel and you know things like that? What got you into cardistry magic? So it's like a two-part story, right? So the first thing is I've been into YouTube for like a pretty, pretty long time. It's been like five years. I had like, I think a channel or two before this, like they were garbage. Like if you guys look at my first few videos, they, they suck. I've gotten better, but I had a couple YouTube channels before that. But the reason I got into card magic was twofold. So I went on a, a mission trip to Peru, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the guys I went with, it was like a 30, a group of like 30 guys in like, I think we were like freshmen, maybe it was a couple years ago. Right. And he did card tricks. Right. And he did, what was the trick? He did a, um, he did the snap change to me yeah. and I, my mind was blown. Like, like it was a first, cause I had seen how to do it before, but I didn't understand like, cause you know, it's so angle sensitive. Right. And yeah. it's like, so I never understood it was so powerful, but he did it at the right angle. And my mind was just like, bro, what? So I get back from Peru. And I'm all like, man, I, you know, that got me into magic, right? So I search up uh, magic trick tutorials online, and the very first video I see is, you know, the Russian genius, right? Oh, yeah, of course. So that, that, that dude, I love his accent. <laughs> <laughs> I see his video, and he does a trick. He does the classic pass, which I didn't know what it was at that time. Mm -hmm. but, so he shows the trick, right, the performance. And my mind was, like, quadruply blown. Like, it was insane. I was like, oh, my, what? Magic is real? So, because I had had, like, no previous, like, exposure to magic. So I was like, oh my gosh. So that got me into magic, right? So I didn't, so I started doing some magic on the side with like some bicycle decks. Yeah. And then I also really, really liked video editing and like Photoshop and like, like the Adobe suite and like using those applications. So about that same time, my dad got me, um, well, he has it for his business. He was like, hey, he heard I was interested. He was like, hey, if you want, you can use, I can like log, like give you the account so you can dabble in it and whatever. And so I liked YouTube, I liked video editing, and I liked magic, and I was like, okay, this is a great way for me to go, like, give my best shot at YouTube, see, like, you know, start learning, to edit all the time, and then to do car magic. So basically what I did, I was like, all right, I'm just going to start uploading every single day. <laughs> and, like, for a solid, I think, 90 or 100 days, it was, like, a couple months, right? Yeah. I was just uploading every single day. And, like, the videos were garbage, because I was, like, I was teaching magic, but I didn't know how to do magic, like, it was so bad. So I got, I got a ton of hate, but I learned so much about like video editing, about YouTube, about magic. Um, and so that's how I got started with this YouTube channel. It was like a combination of two, three things. And I was just like, this is great. Cause I learned magic. I learned how to edit and I get to do YouTube, which I love doing. So that's, that's how this channel started. Well, I think it's actually quite similar for me as well. When I, when I first started, I was in uh, high school and I started like a channel where I just did skits with a friend of mine. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, like uh, Jake and Amir or uh, Key and Peele. Key and Peele, yeah. <laughs> so we, we tried <laughs> doing things like that, but it flopped hard. It was, it was so bad. I do, I bet. The first and year- I look at it now and I laugh because I'm there and my friend's there. So it's funny that way. But if I showed it to other outside friends, they're just, that was their, their expression the entire time was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a skill like videos and stuff like that it's a, it's a skill that needs to be developed for sure mm -hmm. yeah but that uh i know you also did a 90 to 100 day um i guess consistent daily uploads recently as well yeah and it does right. take a lot of effort i'm sure, sure like you were you were dying at times oh my gosh man it was it was bad the the reason i did that is so i like i got so burnt out on YouTube a while back. And I don't think I uploaded for like a solid year, year and a half, right? And I just, just was going around my everyday life doing my stuff. I didn't even touch cards. I had like a ton of cards in a drawer. I never looked at them. Like I didn't touch them, like made me sick, right? And then one day I get in, I like for, just for fun, I check my, my email 
that's related to this YouTube channel, Disky yeah. Tricks, right? So I check it out and I see an email that says, hey, you just hit 1,000 subs. And I was like, holy, holy, like, dang, that's insane. <laughs> so that like sort of like, I was like, man, I, and then I started looking back at my videos and I got all nostalgic and everything. I was like, I put so much work into this and it kind of motivated me to get back into the channel. And I was like, all right, well, I started this channel doing like posting every day. I'm way better at video editing now. So how about I do another 90 day challenge? And luckily it was, I think it was during the summer about, yeah. so I was able or most of it. So I was able to do that. And yeah, so I posted every day. So it was, I was trying to do, you know, quality and quantity, that whole thing. I was trying to do quantity, but as much quality as I could fit in while uploading every day. So um, yeah, so I uploaded 90 days and it was, it was pretty good. It was not only like analytics wise, but just get it coming back from like just being dead for a year or two. It was, it was a great way to, you know, just resurrect the channel. So yeah, and yeah, I, know, was, I was, I was quite glad to see you back as well. And that really inspired me to step up my video quality, seeing you upload like every single day. It just mm-hmm. blew my mind how you did it. But I remember, I remember when you got to 1k subs, cause I, I think we had talked a little bit before that. Uh, I think uh, before maybe you were like four or 500 subs or something like that. Mm. And we had talked before that. And I remember then you had just dropped off the face of the earth yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's, that's, that's an F. Thing. That's an F for sure. <laughs> and then I went back to your channel. I forgot um, what move it's called, but I think it was, it was uh, by the verts and that video did so well. It was crazy, man. I was, um, what was it? I remember being into SEO and everything. And now I try to optimize for like, this is a whole nother discussion, but I've tried to optimize for browse features and stuff because this, that the volume is so much better, but I was going for YouTube search back in the day. And that was a trick that nobody, yeah, nobody taught. Like there was one guy, but it was, it was, it was a pretty bad video. I mean, it was pretty <laughs> bad. So I was like, all right, this is my shot. Cause I know I searched up for this. I know there's definitely a demand for this. And so I just, I just went for it. And yeah, so I, I spent a lot, I spent so long trying to learn that move. And I tried to like, and then basically I wrote down every single problem I had with it. So that in the video, I was able to be like, all right, if you have this problem, then this is the answer. If you have this problem. So yeah. And then it, it did pretty well. It was, it was always like, yes, it was nice. All right. Good stuff. So um, now, now another question uh, that I have for you is uh, people have actually asked me this a couple of times. What made you choose the name Disky for your uh, YouTube channel? So this is, this is a, uh, it's pretty random, but this goes back to the, another YouTube channel I had before. So I wanted to start a gaming YouTube channel with my friend, right? Oh my God. I think that's, that thing, that's a dream for a lot of people. That's a dream. Exactly, dude. So I knew like, okay, one, we gotta, we gotta do Minecraft. And two, we can't use our real names because that's lame. We got to make up usernames, right? And I was like, dang. So we, we spent like a solid week trying to figure out usernames. And I don't remember. Oh, I do remember. Okay. So what happened is I have an Xbox, right? Yeah. And I think my username had something. It was like something disc, right? And so I kind of liked it because it was like it, 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 the, the name, the username rhymed. And I was like, okay, I don't want to use disc. How about disky, right? And so we started this other channel. It was disky and uh, what was his name? Friend's name. Oakland and disky or something. If you guys search that up, we have one video up only. It's like a Minecraft video. It's so bad. It's so cringy. I show it to my friends. They, they unfollow me on Instagram. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but um, so that's how, yeah, it was, it was basically, I just sort of changed my Xbox username. We started a channel. And then when I started this channel, I was like, I'm gonna just go with this. And so that's what I did. Wow. Good stuff. Actually, one fun fact, I think so the Disky channel, as you guys know it, before it was Disky, it was actually called Amps. And it was a music channel with two of my friends. Oh wow. And we posted like four videos. Um it was piano, guitar, and ukulele. Uh, <laughs> and so we placed three three uh songs. They're just covers, right? And uh, so, yeah, that's a little fun fact. So I deleted those, changed everything to Disky, changed the username, and started uploading magic. So what you're saying is you could sing. I mean, I got a singing role in a senior year of high school. So, yeah, I could could sing Sing a little bit. (laughs) I mean, I haven't sang in a while, but uh, um, yeah, it was was a good time. Good stuff. Yeah, that's that's a... all right so uh next question i have for you and people ask me this all the time is what's your learning process for if you're learning a card trick or if you're learning any kind of uh new cardistry move flourish and uh, things like that what's your learning process what do you think uh, would help people practice better yeah so at first when i first got into magic 
I heard all of, like I would, I would watch videos and I'd read books and like magazines and online. I had a lot of the magicians, I, I'm gonna call them older magicians because that's what I think they are. They'd be like, you gotta learn from a book. That's the best way to do it. DVDs. I was like, Dude, I don't even have a DVD player, <laughs> man. Right. And so I, I'd open a book up. I'd buy some books from Amazon and I didn't understand anything. Yeah. Like with the illustrations and like, like it's easier now because I'm sort of used to it. But mm-hmm. when I first started out, it was so hard. And so I realized that video, first of all, if you're trying to learn magic or cardistry, video is the way to go. So, I mean, you're, everybody watching this is probably already learning from YouTube, right? But so good job. The first thing is video is so much better. Only learn from a book, in my opinion, if you're really trying to, you know, learn some like other stuff, right? That just for fun, right? But so that was the first thing. Learn from video. And then for magic is... A lot of the times people who teach magic on YouTube, they learn the trick and then there's like little things that they subconsciously do that make the move work that they might not say in the video, right? Mm -hmm. If they do catch it and they say in the video, that's amazing, right? But a lot of the times they do like these little things they don't talk about that make the move work. And if you don't do those little things, it doesn't work. So I always try to rewatch that video like that little part where they do the trick like six, seven, 11 times, right? To really get that down, the exact motion they're doing. And so that, and it's the same thing for cardistry. You really got to watch what they're doing with their hands because they might say do this, but they're doing so much more with their hands to make the, the move work, right? And for cardistry, it's two things, right? Second thing for me is you got to do, it, it takes time to get the flow, right? I think you know, right? Like just to get, even for moves you invent yourself, like moves I make to get the flow down, it's just so much practice to get that muscle memory and get that flow. Yeah. And then the other thing is, if you just practice one card for move at a time, you're going to get so bored. So exactly. I always make sure to have like four, three, three, four or five moves that I'm learning so I can alternate and never get bored. So those are my tips. Yeah. That, that, you actually brought up some great points. And that's actually why I started the, uh, the learn with me series that I do on my channel, mm-hmm. because I wanted to see, well, I wanted to show people how they could learn just from scratch. And every time I made a little bit of progress, then I always talked about what helped me make that progress or what little motion I did to help me, you know, better my, um, yeah. I guess, practice. Yeah, exactly. Those videos are super fun to watch just because seeing it from another person's point of view, you know, it sort of brings people down to earth, but it's also just super interesting to watch because how people learn as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm also glad you brought up the other point of um, having multiple moves to practice at once. And this is something that uh, I tell people who uh, message me directly or ask for any tips is when you're practicing cardistry, definitely practice two to three moves at once. Mm-hmm. Because if you're practicing that one move and you get, um, I don't know, you come across an obstacle, you just can't get something down. You just get so frustrated. Exactly. And yeah. then you just don't want to do it anymore. So it's definitely great to have a, a couple of moves. Yeah. And also just moves that aren't in the same like niche, right? You can have like fans, you can have packet cuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The more different they are, the better it is. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, now, I know we talked a little bit about YouTube in the beginning. And a lot of the people that watch this channel have their own YouTube channels where they do card magic or they do cardistry and things like that. So um, what advice do you have for people that uh, would go about who want to start off a YouTube channel? And uh, I guess also share some struggles that you had with yours. Sure. So, I mean, several things. The first thing off the top of my head is so the, if you're trying to grow in the magic niche or the, the card niche, it's, it's, there's a limit, right? I mean, if you look at Chris Ramsey, right, the mm-hmm. biggest YouTuber in that, he only blew up after he transferred to another niche, which was puzzles, right? And that sort of exploded, right? So there's a limit to your growth in the magic niche. So be aware of that. The second thing is, there's, I, I, like, I never like when people say there's, it's too saturated because saturation just means there's a higher barrier to entry, right? Yeah. And what that means is you got to do something different to stand out if you want to grow, right? Like for me, what I did to grow that made me stand out from everybody else was I uploaded every single day, right? Yeah. And my quality was garbage, but people really wanted content and they didn't want to wait for another YouTuber that they preferred like for another week or another three days, right? So yep. if they came to me, always something new every single day. So that was my way of sticking out. So if you're going to go in the magic niche, do something different. Don't be like everybody else. Do something different that stands out. For example, Chris Ramsey. I know you guys all know who he is, right? What did he do that made him stand out? He worked on his quality, right? He has the best, like it's not even an argument. He has the best quality videos on YouTube in this niche that we're in, right? Alex Pandrea comes really close next. Um, And that's, yeah, you know, and then there's this kind of a big jump for everybody else. And it's going to be a little struggle. It's going to be a little hard because he he has a lot more time and money to put into like that quality. 
But if you think when you're starting a YouTube channel, what can I do to be different? You're going to grow a lot quicker just by being different. So that would be my, that would be my key tip. And as for my struggles, um, definitely, man, uh, there were, there were a bunch learning how to edit videos. Cause mm-hmm. I was you know, learning how to edit videos. So learning how to edit videos was a, was a big struggle, struggle for me. Um, dealing with the, Hey, I was a lot younger. So a lot of people were like, you suck. And they were right. I suck. Right. But being able to like, you know, sort of overcome that and be like, yeah, I suck. But like, I'm gonna keep on doing it. Cause I'm doing this to, it was at the end of the day, I was doing the channel for me, which yeah. I don't know, I don't think I'm selfish, but I was doing it for me. Cause I wanted to like improve upon all these things. Right. And the great thing about YouTube is that you can, it's, you can just sort of see what you put out. You can put out stuff. It's a way of self-expression, you know? If I was just editing videos and they just stayed in a folder on my computer, that's not as, like, enjoyable. It's, like, putting them out there and seeing them on YouTube. So, yeah, that's definitely one of the struggles there for me. Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, just adding a little bit to that, um, people do get hate every now and then. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to differentiate between who is just hating to hate and who's giving you, like, const- uh, constructive criticism to help sure. you improve. So you kind of want to make the differentiation between the two. So I think one thing that helps me is that regardless of who it is, regardless of what type of, I guess, hate that I feel that that comment brings, um, it's for me, it's more like, okay, does this comment have any real basis or is this just something that someone said because they're having a bad day? Yeah, for sure. So, um, and, and the great thing about having a YouTube channel is it actually pushes people to improve. And I've seen that just by watching some of my old quality videos or my older videos, whatever content I have, I've seen so many things that I have improved upon now and so many things that I still have to improve upon. So I think it's definitely great just to have the channel just to give yourself the ability to improve. Exactly. It's great to look back and see, oh my gosh, this first video, like I didn't even have a tripod or in like the quality just garbage, right? (laughs) So like your latest video where it's like, wow, this is so much better. It's really motivating to see the results. Yeah. This is why people take like when they, when they're trying to, you know, get fitter at the gym, that's why they take like pictures every week. So that like after every week, they can see, oh my gosh, I'm actually improving. I'm getting slimmer. I'm getting bigger or whatever. So yeah, definitely. That's a really positive part of being a YouTuber. Yep. And, and that leads me to asking, what's your favorite thing about running a YouTube channel? Man, it's gotta be the self-expression, just being able to edit videos the way I want them to be and then putting them out there and it's like oh my gosh this is exactly what I wanted it's it's basically being able to express myself over video and sort of being able to create the videos any way I want that's really great like for the creative part of me um Mm -hmm. just creating videos like that the second part is just that community right like you make a video people come like oh I like this or you learn a lot of stuff like for example just this video I uploaded yesterday I thought this was the first deck of playing cards to have a UV like feature, UV like yeah. feature, but apparently it's been done before. And I searched it up because some guy commented about it and there's another deck of cards and it's really cool. So you, you learn a lot of stuff. So those are some two big pros to this for sure. All right. Yeah, yeah definitely. Good stuff. Um, now uh, I guess I just want to wind down by asking you one more question. And I think this is probably, mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite questions that I had someone ask me is have you ever messed up performing a card trick or in front of people what was the story what reactions did you get how did you cover it up if you were able to cover it up yeah so i'm a little different from other magicians in that i learn i really love the slidey tricks like the stuff you never use in magic and so i don't perform a lot right i've performed before i've performed some cardistry i've performed some magic before and it's always great like the reactions but i don't know i'm not I'm like i'm a very outgoing person but for my magic i like keeping that to myself right so that being said there was a time um i was performing a trick and it was it's my favorite trick to perform with people right it's basically somebody chooses a card you control it to the bottom you do a gambler's cop and then it's in your mouth while mm-hmm. they're like looking through the cards so it's weird because that's that's my go-to while at first for me it was really scary doing that because it's kind of easier to get caught when you yeah. think about it yeah but i think what i was doing is i was it was with some friends right some of my friends we were hanging out and we had a deck of cards and so i decided to mess with them right and so i'd be like okay pick a card they pick one and then I'd, I'd cop it or i'd palm it and then it'd be gone from the deck right and i think i did it like four times <laughs> and like finally they caught me like palming it off and it was it, it wasn't bad at all like the, the, it wasn't like awkward it wasn't cringy it wasn't kind of like weird 
it was funny because they had been really fun sort of teasing like oh your card's gone i made it disappear like jokes on you and then they caught it and it was it was like a funny funny experience so i can't say i've been caught and it's been like super cringy before but then again i haven't performed a lot you know what i'm saying but most of the time when i'm performing i perform very safe tricks at first and then build up so yeah i that was probably the worst the, the worst one okay yeah yeah that's not too bad I think for me, it was, um, I forgot exactly where I was, but um, it was probably either sometime in college or right the summer after senior year of high school. Mm. But um, so what I'd done was a couple of my friends had gotten together and uh, we were, we were out eating somewhere and I started doing a card trick and it just, I, I don't, I don't really know what happened. I was, I was doing a, it was, it was not a card to mouth, but it was, it was card to pocket. Nice. Those are fun. And I did the exact same thing. I was going for the gambler's cop and doing that. But for some reason, I just, my hands was not, it was not functioning. I couldn't, I couldn't get the gambler's cop. Mm. And I'm just sitting there for the longest time. Let me see if I can get a deck. I was just sitting there for the longest time, just, just trying to do this. Ah, uh, yikes. And I was, I was wondering like, what's going on. <laughs> and then uh, I guess the only good thing about that was I was able to carry on with another trick just because I knew other places I could go with it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. But it was, it was awkward for about a minute where I was. That just... must've been pretty stressful too. It's like, come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dude. I feel, I feel that. I feel that man. That's also why I don't perform <laughs> man. On the other hand, that's good. Did anybody catch it or no? Like, were they like, Oh, is that my car at the bottom or were you able to like end it successfully? I was I was able to end it pretty successfully. I I ended it with actually a card to mouth. Okay. Gotcha. And I mean, people were wondering like, what are you what are you doing? Like, it's just in your hand and you're just filling up the cards. <sighs> so that that was a bit weird, but yeah, I don't think I got like caught caught. And gotcha. the, the 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 one time I did get caught, it was after I'd performed it like four or five times, like like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was just them trying to figure it out. So it wasn't like a like a high stake situation. Exactly. Okay. But it was just people trying to figure it out and they eventually got it. That's what, that's what I love about the card to mouth because it's, even if you get caught, like there's the main spectator who picks the card, right? Yeah. And you're doing the trick to them and everybody else is watching, right? So when you bring it up to your mouth, if the other spectators see it, they're in on the joke. Like at that point, it's yeah. not a magic trick really per se. It's yeah. like a joke because they're just watching the, the main spectator fumble with the cards, trying to find their card exactly. while it's in your mouth. And they, everybody's laughing. It's, that's why I love the card to mouth so much because it's such a fun sort of ha jokes on you kind of thing. But it's not like it doesn't make anybody mad. It's not. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, why, that's why it's my go-to. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I don't think I have any other real questions for you. I guess, do you have any, um, anything that you're uh, working on now or um, any new video ideas coming up or anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I have uh, some decks I'll be reviewing soon, but also I'm trying to figure out, I want to start doing more on the channel, like just totally unrelated to cards. So either I'll be creating another YouTube channel to do that, or I'll just start doing like, I don't know, like a random day like every Friday, like obviously this is when I have less school because yeah. guys, I am drowning in calculus right now. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. Integrals suck. But um, yeah, it's all for the degree. It's all for the degree. But um, when I have more time, I'll probably be doing like, I don't know, like maybe a Friday every week where it'll be just a completely random video. Like you guys could, it could be anything. It could be a vlog. It could be, I don't know, reviewing a random Amazon product. It literally, it's, that's what I'm going to love about that day. It's going to be completely random. And we'll see what you guys enjoy, what I'll enjoy as well. So that's a series I'm excited on working on. Besides that, I'm just trying to upload consistently, um, like every Thursday. <laughs> Usually it's a Friday, but I'm trying to upload every Thursday or Friday consistently. And uh, yeah, keep on posting on the channel. All right, good stuff. And actually, I, you brought up a good point. I just want to ask one more question in closing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance your schoolwork with uploading on, uh, on YouTube? It's very, it's very precarious. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Um, because I uploaded every day, like for 90 days, I've gotten this, I've gotten into the skill of being able to record, edit and upload all in one day. I can get my, um, the fastest, like I think yesterday I was able to do all that in like 45 minutes. Oh, geez. Um, wow. Yeah. It's, I'm a, I'm a speed editor, which is <laughs> good and bad because sometimes I want to put in some extra touch just so I'll take more time. But yeah, so usually I try to record a couple of days earlier and then, you know, just sort of upload gradually. But usually what ends up happening is I'm just, I have like, I don't know, computer science, I'll have calculus, I'll have public speaking, I'll have all these classes 
So then it's Thursday already. And it's like, Oh, I have to make a video. And so I'll just go bang out and bang it out in like one hour. And then, so that's, that's, that's my process is yeah. It's really, really quick. Dude, that's impressive. It takes, um, since I changed up the way that I'm uploading now, I upload mm. every uh, Monday, Thursday and Saturday. And also I'm also trying to up the quality of my videos and, and the teaching. So it's, for me, I, I have to actually, I spent three days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday are the days that I record videos. So I gotcha. today's, uh, we're doing this on a Saturday. So right after this is done, I'm going to finish, finish some more recording. And okay. I'm going to do all my editing like Sunday night, Monday morning. Gotcha. And then I have my videos for the week. So I, I'm pretty much set after that. Gotcha. Yeah. I earlier, so back when I first started the channel, and I was uploading really regularly. What I would do then is on Sunday or Saturday, I'd upload, I'd record seven videos, right? Seven individual videos in like one day. So it'd take like wow. a couple hours, right? And then every day I'd wake up, I don't know, before school. So like at six, and then I would basically record that day's video or sorry, up, edit that day's video and upload it. So that was, that was like batch recording and it was pretty efficient, but man, it burns you out, man. So oh, I was sure. like, yeah, for sure. So doing it, yeah, doing it how you're doing or how I'm doing is definitely better than doing that. But you got to do it. You got to do it, you know? Exactly. But yeah, it's, uh, knowing, knowing how to edit is, is definitely, uh, definitely a plus there. Being able to. I mean, I think I've been editing for a couple of years like now, so I can definitely edit a lot quicker. Yeah, I, I was horrible at editing until I started this YouTube channel. If you look at any of my earlier videos, they're, they're zero editing. It was just one angle, another angle. If I messed up, I messed up. That's it's a video. <laughs> Dude, I was looking back. It was like, I was looking back on my channel at a completely random, just a completely random video. It was like a really old video. I click on it and I messed it up. And I was like, why did I, how did it one, why did I upload this? Two, how did I not see it? And like, what? Like, I was so like, I was so annoyed. So I was like, I like deleted that video off of YouTube. And then I started looking more and like every three videos I had messed up and I hadn't like, and I still uploaded it. And I was like, like, I feel like the perfectionist in me is like, bro, what are you doing? But it's, that's the, that's the thing looking back. The one thing I really like, the big change, you, well, I don't know if it's a big change, but the, the one thing I really like about what you've done with your videos is the thumbnails. Mm. I was not a fan of the older thumbnails, like the way back, like two years. I was not yeah, a fan yeah. of those. <laughs> I like the content, but not the thumbnails, but these thumbnails, I love them so much. So that's the big change I love about your channel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of inspiration actually from watching your videos, from watching um, uh, Kier Gomes. I, I saw so many of his thumbnails and I'm like, I, I think I could do that, right? That shouldn't yeah, be too exactly. Good. I mean, it gets I do spend me like 10, 15 minutes more on each thumbnail just to see how I can make it better. But before I usually spent like a minute. I put, yeah, on yeah. It, I put text on it and that was done published. That was me. And then one day I, I was watching, I don't know if you watch any like YouTube, like growth YouTubers. Yeah. yeah. I Nick Nimmin, Tim Schmoyer, those type yeah. of guys. Um, but they were like, yeah, you should be spending most of your time on the thumbnail because that's what's <laughs> going to get you the views in the first place. And I was like, oh, dang. Okay. So yeah. So I went through a long process. I'm still trying to figure out how to make thumbnails. Right now it's just a picture of the deck and they were like in the, the motion. And I want to start changing it up, but it's working so far. So yeah. All right. Great stuff, man. It was, it was really nice having you here. Um, I don't know if you have any, any last words until I bring you on for next time. Um, honestly, you know, subscribe to card mechanic, best content on YouTube. Good awesome. Stuff. Awesome. Thanks man. And yes, yeah, sir. make sure you guys go out and uh, subscribe to Disky. He, again, he has kind of set, uh, set the level for me and uh, really made me, become a lot better also thank so, you man it was really great really great having you here and uh yeah i'll see all of you next time yes sir thank you for watching